What up, what up, what up, what up? You already know what it do. It's your boy, B Phil, and we're back again to learn something new. Let's jump right into it. All right, so if you've been living under a rock, in the last hour, we just saw a release of GPT 4.0, which is faster and 50% cheaper than the current GPT 4. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see day zero support for GPT 4.0 with the instructor library. And what instructor is gonna allow you to do is get structured output. And what I like to do on these day ones is test these models with structured output. You can go ahead and go here to learn more about it. So instructor, you can go to python.useinstructor. It's created by a very talented ML uh, engineer. Not limited to that, dude's pretty crazy. But yeah, go check out his website and learn more about this package. But let's get back into the video. I wanna show you all how you can use this in practice. So without further ado, let's get into it. So we're gonna go ahead and first, we're gonna instantiate a virtual environment. So let's go ahead and vim, then let's go inst and vim, inst vim. Of course, we do all of these necessary steps. Let's source it, inst vim, then activate. All right, we're gonna pip install instructor. And da, 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 great. We're gonna pip install OpenAI. And it should already be there. We're gonna get Pydantic as well. And we're gonna go python.env. And of course, I'll make this available to you all in the comment section. So we're gonna pip, whoops, install python.env, boom, son. All right, great, now we're all set up. So first we wanna do is, of course, the traditional environment variable, and we wanna go ahead and put in the open AI API key. And this is all one word. And we're gonna set that to equals, and you can do what you've previously done, and that's go to the open AI website, and we're gonna go to platform open AI. And we can just go to API keys here on the left hand side and you can go ahead and get an API key. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one here. I'm gonna call this demo IT. And I'm going to go ahead and bring this back and we're gonna paste it here. So let's go ahead and just create a new file. We're gonna call this start.py. And what we're gonna need are, of course, the, let me make this larger here, and I'm gonna close that. So we're gonna import the instructor library, and we're gonna say from OpenAI, import, of course, OpenAI. And we're gonna import, so from Pydantic, import uh, the base model. And last but certainly not least, we're gonna say from typing import list. So we actually wanna import the field here. I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and show you a more complicated example, more nested version that I usually do. But first I wanna show you a very simple one. So let's go ahead and go class user detail. And this is gonna be base model. Oops, let's go ahead and actually install that while we're waiting. And this base model is gonna have a name, which is a string, and an age, which is an integer. Great. So in order to instantiate the instructor library, we're gonna go ahead and say client equals instructor. Uh oh, I'm not getting my uh, autocompletes. And I'm getting nervous. Get nervous, y'all. So what I'm gonna do is it's instructor instructor dot patch, but I want to make sure crystal clear here. Ah, instructor from open AI, and we're gonna pass the open AI. I'm not sure why this is erroring that error right now on me. Let's reopen this up for whatever reason. Class user detail base model. It looks like my code editor just sucks right now. Okay, so 
what regardless, what we're gonna do here is now we have from OpenAI and we can go ahead and run some structured output here, extraction. So let's go client. Actually, let's go ahead and get our prompt right here, format our prompt, and we'll say extract the user detail from the following. And we'll say Brandon is 26. All right, so now we have our prompt, but of course, think you can go ahead and inject variables in there. So we'll say output equals client dot create with completions. And so what instructor allows you to do is get the raw completions, which I love personally, and it gives you the structured output as the output, or whatever you name it. So we're gonna go ahead and pass the model here. We'll say model equals GPT-4.0. We'll go ahead and have a nice structured one, but I'm gonna go ahead and do this here. So I'm gonna say model equals GPT-4.0. We're gonna say max tokens. I believe it's max tokens, yeah. Tokens equals, we'll say 4,000 here. Then we'll say the response model equals user detail. And then of course, we're gonna pass the messages, which here, this is gonna be role of user. And then the content, and the content is gonna actually be our prompt here. So great. Now we just go ahead and run this. So we say, let's go ahead and print the output. All right, let's run this and see what we get. Uh, we got unexpected max tokens. So for whatever reason, I was this was working for me previously, but I maybe I did change something out here correctly. No, this is not gonna work. Okay, great. So that's fine. Just remove max tokens. And you see how fast that was extremely fast. So we can go ahead and do something a bit more complicated now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bring in my entire harness here. And so basically what this is doing, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy, and you just saw, right? I just wanna show you a simple example. It works, that's 4.0 for you. GBT 4.0 is really, really fast. You see here, Brandon's 26, perfect output. Now we're gonna do something a bit more complicated. So we're gonna pip install pandas. And let me go ahead and get lang fuse here as well. And so all I'm doing right now is I'm getting a way to parse this uh, CSV file. Pip install lang fuse. And of course, this is a bit more much for you. I just wanted, I wanted to show you the capabilities of this model today. And so we have some complex structure here. So we have the business value. We have the, the value that this particular title can bring to the business or it's inferred. We want to get the business goals, of course, an MVP idea, industry, and then the skills. And of course, these are nested. So inside of the business goal, we're going to have some inferred goal and then the actual reference to that goal. Inside of the job value, we're going to infer the value that this role brings to the company. And then we're going to have the reference. And of course, we're going to have a list of the skills based on the actual job description. And of course, the skill can be, it has a label, a name, and then it has the reference as well. So as you can see, it's a little bit more complicated, but not too crazy. So I'm gonna go ahead and scratch this max tokens from there. And we're gonna go ahead and run this. So we have our completions, we got our usage, and we should be good to go here. So let's go ahead and run this. And actually I need to go ahead and put something else in my environment because I do want login, give me one moment here. And all I'm doing is I'm logging this to my backend or my uh, monitoring service. So we wanna trace all this good content. All right, great. So it's running now, let's see what we get. And I'm gonna go ahead and bring up these logs for you so you can see what it's all about, what I'm doing here. And let's go ahead and refresh this a few times. Okay, so as you can see, 
I have this being logged here. And yeah, this is our first output here. And you can look through it. It took 16 seconds approximately, six seconds on the second one. And what we're doing is we're inferring the business value, the role we'll bring to the employer, the business goals of the employer. So we're just trying to pull out all of this information. So you can see from this one, we passed in the actual job description. So Gov CIO is currently hiring for a CEO data engineer to provide their hands-on experience building medical data ingestion pipelines, yada, yada. And we can see here, we have the MVP idea, develop a robust and secure data ingestion pipeline for medical data that includes data cleansing and take. So, I mean, that, that seems pretty good. Uh, bachelor's, eight plus years, Oracle data analyst. So it gives me that PL SQL, and it gives me these extracted from the job title. And we can just verify that by simply control F in here. Um, I actually do have a site called display.datastrain and you can go on here and, and see some of the comparisons. I'll go ahead and update this today once I get done running the large batch of GPT-40. But effectively what you can see is this is a pretty nested JSON and it's doing quite well. And so far we haven't had any misses. Um, last, what I wanna show is the actual chat GPT interface. And what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to test this out. So this is 4.0. This is a Django project. And so what we're going to do is we're going to see if this actually gives us a Django project here. So we're going to do this live and do it with me. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in Django 4.0. I'm going to bring in a project here. And we're going to see if 4.0 is actually good or not. So. I'm gonna have these side by side. So let's go ahead and do this really quickly. This is gonna be a little, little small, so bear with me here, but do your best to follow along. So what I'm gonna do though, is I'm gonna instantiate a virtual environment. So vim, vim. And we're gonna go ahead and activate that. Great. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is pip install Django. So I'm just gonna copy and paste all of this and see how far we can get with this and see if this is actually a working Django app. What I'm not gonna do actually is I'm not gonna bring in this database. I'm gonna leave it default for the sake of this demo because I don't wanna add those credentials on screen. So, all right, great. So looks like we got some stuff here. So we'll go Django admin. Okay, my project, good. We don't wanna configure that just yet. So it's CD'd into my project, let's go here. It's gonna start the app, my app into my project, exactly as you would expect. So what we're gonna do is just do this install apps here. So we go to my project and we go to our settings and right here in installed apps, we just wanna add my app here. So my app, and then you want to Tailwind. And it looks like we have Django Browser Reload for live reloads. Okay, I like that. Okay, so we added that. Now we're going to go in Tailwind init. So let's do that. Uh, browser Django browser reload. So it looks like we're getting an error here. No module of browser reload. So I'm looking and it doesn't have anything there. So that might be a slight miss there. Let me make sure I'm doing this correctly and I'm not actually putting in anything crazy here. So we're going to do that one more time. Okay, great. So we're just going to remove the Django browser reload. I'm going to run this. And it looks like we're having some more issues here. So out of the box, it doesn't look like this is going to work just for the commands. So we're probably going to go ahead and abort this. And I probably am doing something wrong here as I often do. Yeah, so tailwind.py, there's some modifications that we probably need to find out here. So if we wanna see where this is getting this from, tailwind, so Django tailwind here, 
and it's doing this and it looks like we needed to do this reload here if we wanted that browser reload functionality which it seemed to miss of course we had tailwind there we did the tailwind init and it looks like for these themes so we would go tailwind init and then if we did that it's actually going to initialize it so we could go and find this but on the first pass unfortunately it didn't get you where i was trying to go which is not a big deal which is not a big deal at all but hey it's just something to take into account so anyways i'm going to go ahead and in the video here hopefully you learned something here and hopefully you just go ahead and get started start building some stuff let us know what you're doing and hit that like hit the subscribe leave me some comments on what you want to see more of and of course you have a great day y'all peace